Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the contribution to a partnership and specifically the tax consequences for a contribution to a partnership. Generally speaking, neither the partner nor the partnership record any profit or loss, gain or loss, when money or property is contributed in return for partnership interests. What does that mean? It means when the partner contributed money or property to a partnership and in return they get some sort of an ownership interest there are no gain and losses so when you contribute that property well that property could the fair value of that property could be greater than the adjusted basis as a result you have a gain well you cannot recognize the gain or the fair value could be less than the adjusted basis which mean you have a loss you cannot record that loss now why well, you want to record the loss if you can, but the government does not allow you, and you don't want to record the gain because you don't want it to be taxable. So simply put, it's very similar to the to the contribution to a to a corporation, S or C, where it's considered a continuation of ownership. So they the Congress doesn't want to burden you with paying taxes when you form partnership, form businesses. Therefore, that type of contribution is tax free. Now the gain or the loss, any potential gain or loss, is not realized, we don't have to account for it now, until a taxable event occurs. Simply put, it's deferred. The gain or the loss is deferred. When the partnership disposes of the property, well, now it's time for the partnership to do what? Recognize the gain or the loss, or when the partner sells their partnership interests, they will have a gain or a loss. But, however, the basis of the partner's interest in a partnership equal to the basis of the property they contributed. So simply put, the basis of the property you contributed is transferred to the partnership. Which is really, really good because there are no tax consequences. And the good news is you don't have to worry about Section 351. There's no Section 351 for partnership where you have to determine whether you have an 80% control or not for the transaction to be tax-free. What should we do now? Start with a simple example to illustrate these concepts. Start Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Start with partner A, contributed cash of 25000 Well, do we have a gain or a loss for partner A? Well, if you contributed cash, cash is a cash, so it, it doesn't have a higher or lower fair value than its face value for that matter. Therefore, there is no gain, no loss. Basis and partnership interest, you contribute at 25000 that's your basis and the partnership interest, and the $25,000 sitting in the bank account represent a $25,000 property basis in the partnership. Now you contribute, uh, B contributed land with a basis of 8000 fair market value of eighteen. What we have here is a gain Okay, and what I'm going to call this, we're going to see it later in this recording, pre-contribution gain. In other words, there is a gain embedded in that property, and it's pre-contribution before you contributed this land. Well, what are the tax consequences? No tax consequences. Notice we have a $10,000 gain. No tax consequences for now. The basis in the partnership interest for B, the basis in the partnership interest is 8,000. The basis of the land for the partnership also 8,000. So simply put, the basis transferred went from the partner to the partnership. Let's take a look at the third scenario. Partner C contributed equipment with a basis of 24, fair market value of 22. What we have here is a pre-contribution loss. This equipment, if partner C sells it, they would they would realize a loss. Well, they contributed, there is no loss, no gain. The basis, the basis of the partner becomes the basis of the partner and the partnership interest, 20, 24,000. And the basis of the, or the original basis of the equipment becomes the partnership property basis, which is 
24,000. Simply put, the basis transfer. Now let's talk more a little bit more about the tax consequences for Section 1231 and capital asset. The partnership takes the place of the contributing partner holding period. So as far as the holding period, whatever, how long you've been holding it for five years? Well, it's going to be five years with the partnership. They steps into the shoes of the partner. It's a continuation. So if you have this building, you used to own it. Now it's the building in the partnership. If you bought it 10 years ago, well, it's 10 years ago purchased for the partnership. It carries the same cost recovery and amortization computation as before. So whatever you are using for depreciation will keep on going. And if it's an intangible asset, same amortization. Now bear in mind, partnership cannot deduct section 179. Just know this. How about if you contributed to services rather than property or money? Sometimes what happens is you want to join a partnership, but you don't have money or you don't have property to contribute it, but you have a set of skills, skills that's needed for the partnership. So what they would say is this, why don't you provide the service for us and in return, we'll give you part ownership, 20%, 30%, whatever we agreed upon. Now, so when a partner receives a fully vested interest for providing services, the value of the interest, whatever you received in value of the interest, this amount is taxable and usually should be the value of the services, whatever you, whatever you gave them in terms of services. It's considered compensation income. Simply put, it's wages to you, ordinary income. So services cannot be transferred without tax implication. So you do have tax implication. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this concept. Arthur was giving one third capital and profit interest in Delhi LLC with one third valued at 20,000. Why? Well, this payment was given to him for providing tax planning services to the Delhi. So that's all what can Arthur do. They provided tax services. They gave them one third of the company. So as a result of this, Arthur would recognize $20,000 in compensation income, which is basically you know, W2 or 1099, however you want to call it. But they recognize this and they have a basis in the LLC of 20,000. That's how much they, the value of the services. Think of it this way, as of the LLC, as of the LLC, they gave them a check for $20,000 to Arthur, Arthur turned around and wrote the check back to the LLC and got, got one, third, one third interest in the partnership. Same thing, but simply put, there was no money exchange. Simply put, they gave them the partnership interest. But the point is, it's as, it's as, it's as, it's as if they did this. And that's why the 20,000 is compensation income that's taxable and the basis is 20,000. Now, as far as the LLC is concerned, the $20,000 is an amortizable startup cost, which is an expense. We'll talk about uh, startup and organizational cost uh, shortly. How about if you contributed ordinary asset? What are we looking at here? We're looking at receivable inventory. So any asset other than capital asset in section 1231. Okay. The holding period for these assets start from the date the partner acquires the partnership interest. So your the the holding period doesn't start. It's not a continuation. It's from the time you contributed to the partnership. So when a partnership sells unrealized receivable or property that's qualified as inventory by the contributing partner, providing it's sold within five years. The gain or loss is treated as ordinary income. Those are ordinary assets. Therefore, the income is treated as ordinary uh, or taxed at an ordinary rate. Now, we're going to look at a few examples to illustrate the contribution to a partnership versus scenarios where we have pre-contribution loss, pre-contribution gain. And we're looking at a partnership. Uh, we're going to call it AB partnership. So we have two partners that form AB partnership. They are equal partners, 50% each. Partner A contributed a piece of land, has a fair market value of 20, adjusted basis of 12. What can we do? We can, we would know, we know for now that we have pre contribution gain of 8,000. Excellent. Just, just make a note of it. It's not recognized. It's not. It's not uh, shown anywhere. Just make a note of it. Okay. One year later, 
AB partnership sells the land for 21,000. So let's see what happened now. Now the land was sold. So the consideration received is 21,000. The basis of the property is the same basis as the partner, 12,000, which was transferred. So we have, no, actually it was sold for 21,200, not 21,000. So we have what we called now a realized gain, realized slash recognized gain of 9,200. Okay, what do we need to do with this? What do we need to do with this gain? How are we going to allocate the gain? Now, remember what I told you earlier to make a note of this 8,000 because this 8,000 belongs to A, belongs to partner A because partner A contributed the land. So when we allocate the gain or the loss, the 8,000, it still, it's still, it would still be with A, it would still be with partner A, it doesn't go away. The additional gain, which is the uh, the 1,200, because we had a gain total of 9,200. That's the total gain. Now, 8,000 of it belongs to A. Belongs to A. So what? how much left is 1,200? Now, the 1,200 will be distributed between A and B. So the 1,200, so it's going to be the 1,200 times 50%. And 1200 to be times 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So this is the post contribution fair market value. Let's write here. Actually, I wrote it down. Post contribution increase in fair market value. So the post contribution was 1200. Okay. So this was 8000. The total. Let me just have the total here. Maybe it it will help. Total. The total gain. The the pre contribution gain total is 8000. This is the pre-contribution gain and the post-contribution is 1,200 so the total is allocated as 9,200 okay which is uh, which is 600 to B and 8,600 to A okay and this will prevent partner A uh, from avoiding the taxes on the 8,000 so, so this way they don't just contribute an appreci appreciable property to the partnership and what do they do they turn around and they sell it uh, in the hope that other partners will pick up their gain. That, that doesn't happen. You pick up your own gain in a, in a partnership. You pick up your own gain in a partnership. Okay? okay, let's look at a different scenario, a little bit different. Again, the same partnership, partner A and partner B equal partners. Here, partner A contributed a property for, uh, has a fair market value of 20, cost basis of 30. Okay, what do we have here? Hopefully you see we have a, uh, a pre-contribution loss. What do we do with this pre-contribution loss? Absolutely nothing. You just know it's a pre-contribution loss. The basis of 30,000 will be transferred to the partnership as the basis in the property. Now one year later, AB partnership sells the land for 16,000. Now we sold the land for 16,000. Okay, so consideration received is 16,000 minus the adjusted basis. The adjusted basis is 30,000. So we have a loss of 14,000. So the pre-contribution loss was 10,000. The pre-contribution loss was 10,000. Now the pre-contribution loss, this 10,000 belongs to A. It doesn't, it doesn't change. Belongs to A. So, so this belongs to A. So what's going to happen when we go down to allocate the gain and the loss after we make the sale, the 10,000 would still go to A. The 10,000 would still go to A. Now the question is, what about the total 14,000? Because the total gain is 14,000. The additional 4,000, let me just put the additional 4,000. We said the 14,000 was the total loss. 10,000, this is the total loss. Of this 14, 10,000 is A's losses. So what we are left is what we call this the post contribution gain, uh, loss. <laughs> post contribution loss. So we post contribution loss is 4,000. So since it's a post contribution, each one of them will get 2,000. So negative 2,000 to A, negative 
2000 to be and now we this is the total the total is 10,000 losses uh, pre-contribution and 4,000 losses post-contribution 4,000 we accounted for the 4,000 12,000 is covered or absorbed absorbed by a and the uh, in the uh, and 2000 is absorbed by B now what happened if the subsequent sale if we sell it and it's between the fair market value and the adjusted basis so what happened if we sold this property here uh, for 22,000 or for 23,000 so it's in between the fair market value and the adjusted basis okay so how do we contribute any gain or loss well here's the rule for you so write it down copy it so we're gonna go ahead and do it if subsequent losses if subsequent sales price is between the fair market value and the adjusted basis at the contribution date the contributing partner which is a in this situation the contributing partner the contributing partner will will have a gain or a loss equal to the lesser of lesser of let me just built in gain or built in loss originally or the partner gain or loss so we'll have to figure out what is the built-in gain or loss and what's the partnership gain or loss overall and the contributing partner will absorb the lesser of these two the lesser of these two and the best way to do this is to work an example obviously so again we have two partners a and b a and b equal partners um, a contributed land the fair, fair market value is 20 adjusted basis is 30 again here hopefully you see we have a um, built-in loss pre-contribution loss of 10,000 what do we do with this just make a note of it just it's it it's a loss the partnership will take the basis of 30,000 and your basis in the property is 30,000 one year later uh, one year later the partnership sold the land sold the land for 22 and hopefully you know where we're going with this 22,000 is what 22,000 is in between the fair market value and the adjusted basis so we sold the land for 22 so consideration received is 22,000 the adjusted basis in the land is 30 which will give us a loss of 8,000 which will give us a loss of 8,000 now how much how much gain and loss is allocated to each partner first of all before we proceed hopefully you know that the 10,000 contribution loss doesn't go away the 10,000 contribution loss by by the first partner the pre contribution okay this loss doesn't go away it would still belong to a so a a will have to absorb will have to absorb this loss it, it doesn't go away okay now what's gonna happen is this since the um, since the uh, since the contribution was made since the contribution was made um, we have to determine what is the gain or the loss for the partnership now the gain or the loss for the partnership actually is 8,000 okay how do we how do we know it's 8,000 look they sold it for 22 the partnership sold it for 22 minus 30 which is 8,000 the pre contribution is 10,000 now the partnership gain or loss the partnership gain or loss is 8,000 is 8,000 now we have two figures to choose from two figures to choose from we have the 8,000 and we have the 10,000 losses well obviously the losses all the losses belongs to a so B should, B should not absorb any losses we have less losses but we still have the losses we used to have 10 now we have 8 how much would would with partner a count as losses well it's the lesser of these two because it's the lesser of here's what I told you in the rule it's the lesser of the built-in gain or loss or the partnership gain or loss the partnership gain or loss is lesser 8,000 therefore partner a will absorb 8,000 what do partner B get nothing partner B has nothing to do with this losses all the losses belongs to a nothing belongs to partner B okay and let's take a look at one more example we have we have uh, two partners a and B okay a partner a contributed land 
contributed land, fair market value of 20, adjusted basis of 30. So now we have a uh, loss. Again, this is a, uh, what do we call this loss? A, uh, uh, we call it a pre-contribution loss. We don't, we don't do anything with it. We just let it go for now until we sell the property. So we sold the property for 36,000. Okay, consideration received 36,000. The partnership minus the partnership adjusted basis. The partnership adjusted basis will be the same as the partner basis, which is 30,000. Now let's figure out what do we have. We have a realized um, a realized gain of 6,000. A realized gain of 6,000. Now we have adjusted basis. I'm sorry, a, a pre-contribution loss of 10,000. Okay, this is the pre-contribution loss. of 10,000 and we have a realized gain of 6,000 now what's going to happen is this the loss doesn't go away the loss would still be absorbed by a so the pre-contribution built-in loss would still be absorbed by a okay now we have to look at the post contribution increase and in fair market value how much was the post contribution increase well the fair market value post contribution was 36,000 pre contribution was 20,000 so the post contribution increase is 16,000 this is called post contribution increase in fair market value now the post contribution increase belongs to both of them belongs to a as well as B so this post contribution increase belongs to both of them because this happened after a contributed the property so I contributed the land so any increase in the land will belong to both will belong to both so if it belongs to both so 50% goes to a and 50% goes to B 0.5 okay so the total allocated losses for A will be 2,000 and the total allocated gain to B will be 8,000 and total 6,000 which is we accounted for the 6,000 so always double check and make sure the total gain allocated to both partners equals to the partnership just to make sure you are on the right track at the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you again to do what? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, multiple choice, true, false questions. That's going to help you understand the concept of contributing to a partnership. What are the tax consequences for those contributions? Whether you are a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student, this topic is important. Invest in yourself. Good luck and stay safe.